Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be discussing weapon retention with long gun. We were out here training and Josh brought out his foul so that uh, we can try it out and I um, figured this is a good opportunity to film some techniques on weapon retention with long gun. Now this wouldn't necessarily be my choice of a CQB weapon, but it happens to be what we were training with and so we're going to take the opportunity to use it. Now for, for safety reasons, we went ahead and we took the bolt out. So this gun is, is inoperable, it won't actually shoot in that condition. We, furthermore, we put a little marker here so that we remember that this gun has no bolt. Okay, so this gun cannot shoot. Okay, that's our safety protocol. This, this uh, method will also work with AKs. And in a future video, Josh is going to go ahead and demonstrate how you can take the bolt out of the gun, you know, remove the dust cover, take out the, the bolt and stuff so that if you choose to do this type of stuff, uh, you have a way to do it. Uh, obviously, it's preferable to use a red gun or some type of facsimile gun, uh, but in this case, I, I have yet to find a training foul that we could use. So rather than using a broomstick, we're going to use the foul in, in a quite safe condition. Now, uh, from the record, this is Josh's foul. Uh, he's kind enough to let me use it for this demonstration. He's also going to join me for the demonstration. Come on in, Josh. Now, I also want to take a, an opportunity and uh, say a big hello to our friends out in Slovenia, Polnar Tactical. And Josh is wearing his uh, foul operator shirt since we're going to be using the foul. Okay, so we find ourselves in a close quarter environment. Being able to control the muzzle is extremely important. Should somebody go for a gun grab, there's a number of things that I can do. The first and foremost would be to move the muzzle out of the way. So if I can get you right here in front of me, Josh. As Josh comes to go get the muzzle, I move it out of the way and bring it back to bear on Josh. That would probably be the easiest thing. If I have the luxury of time. If I don't, he may actually get his hands on the muzzle. So if he were to grab the muzzle, if he's not pressing down so hard or if he's pushing in such a way, I can try to break the grip and come back to bear with the, uh, with the gun. Not always possible, but if that's available, that's a possibility. Now keep in mind that if you're using a sling system, that sling may present problems. I'm going to show you a technique for, for use when you don't have a sling on or maybe uh, a quick release sling. And then we'll look at what we can do if we are using a sling. Okay, if Josh attempts to take the gun and he presses it down, go ahead and press it down, and I can't bring this back up, I'm going to take the butt and I'm going to give it to him hard. Go ahead and hang on to the gun. As he takes hold of it, I can transition to my other weapon. Okay, so let's take a look at that again. I'm going to know when I butt strike and just grab the gun. Okay, so he grabs the gun, presses it down. I want to hit him, bang, hard, and I'm going to bring my gun out. Now, in the position that I'm handing it off to him in, it's going to take him a little bit before he can bring that gun to bear on me. So uh, getting to my gun will probably happen a lot faster than he'll be able to reorient orient this gun towards me. So that's one possibility. Now, if I have the sling on, and this may be one possible argument, for why you may choose to not go with a one-point sling. I happen to like one-point slings, but two-point slings give you the opportunity to release the gun and slide out of it. Kind of like uh, when you're hockey fighting and the guy pulls your t-shirt over your head and you slide right out of it. So if you were to grab the gun, I could back out of the sling and draw my own gun. Of course, I'd be giving him the butt like the previous technique but I'm going to be sliding out from the sling. So, we got the sling back on, and he goes ahead and grabs the gun, and we're fighting for the gun. I'm going to give him the butt hard, and as I do that, I'm going to transition, coming back to my hand. Okay. And one last thought. Keep in mind that as you're struggling for the gun, opportunistic things uh, that can be done should always be done. If he grabs my gun and I palm strike him into the face to get him away, that may present an opportunity for me to break his grip. If he grabs the gun and I bash him in the face and he backs off, well, 
I'm back to where I started from. Okay, one last thought here. When, we, when we're training these skills, we generally go through a progression where we start off doing these things statically, and then we do it uh, cooperatively with a partner. Then we go and we hit uh, pads and stuff, and then we break out the fist suit and drill this against a resisting opponent. And when you start to look, go through this pro uh, progression, you start to see how there's a dynamic flow that's occurring. And you will have to kind of improvise on the fly what the more appropriate technique will be. So think about this. He goes and he grabs a gun and I bash him with it. Now he backs off. I come back right back to where I started from. Okay, or he grabs the gun and I hit him with my offhand and now I'm able to break his grip. Don't forget that your regular fighting skills come into play here too. Okay, that's not to, to say that other techniques that, that uh, may work with different equipment aren't part of the picture too. If I have a single point sling, I may just drop it and transition to the gun, to the handgun rather. Um, consider that backup weapons have their role here. Consider that your empty hand skills also have their role here. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm Tony, this is Josh. This is the Urban Survival Craft Project. Until next time, take care.